Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Nick. This week I want to show you how I made this cherry cabinet. It's got a TV lift mechanism inside. If you want to see how I made it, stick around. I began the project by picking out my materials and marking out all my pieces. And then I could cut them to rough length over at the miter saw. And then bring all my pieces over to my surface planer and plane everything down to its final thickness. Dust collection is definitely on my list of things to do. On the table saw I could then cut everything to its final width. And for the case of the top and the sides I cut biscuit slots. Then I could just add some glue and biscuits and clamp everything nice and tight. Cleaning out a little bit of the glue squeeze up as I went. The top was too wide to fit through my thickness planer so that I planed down by hand. Then I could cut the top to its exact width, square up one end, and cut it to length. I then began work on the Aspen subtop. Basically just a couple of essentially rails and styles. So I could take them over to the hollow chisel mortiser and create a couple mortises. And then cut the opposing pieces with my tenoning jig and finishing it up on the table saw. The bottom shelf, pretty much the same thing, glued and biscuited everything up, squared up one end, and cut it to length. For the side pieces, I used a 3 quarter inch dado stack and cut some dados in the bottom section where the bottom shelf was going to reside. And then in the top, I could cut a rabbit for that sub top to go into. I thought it was pretty neat that you could see the biscuits. Carcass assembly was pretty much straightforward. The bottom shelf fit into that dado and I clamped everything nice and tight and used a couple calls to get even clamping pressure. I made sure everything was square because I ended up gluing the subtop on the very next day. Then with some cherry I could work on cutting the face frame. Cutting my material to size, squaring the ends, cutting it to length, and laying out for some mortises and cutting those out on the hollow chisel mortiser. Once I had the cheek cuts and all the tenons done, then I could move on to assembly. I made sure to do a dry fit because this was a pretty ambitious glue up. Everything fit nicely, so I moved ahead, added glue, and worked quickly. Once all the clamps were on it, I just set that aside to dry. Once the face frame was dry, I could apply a little bit of glue to the front of the carcass and glue the face frame in place. I had about an eighth inch, maybe a three sixteenths inch overhang on the face frame. Then I could sand the carcass nice and smooth to 220 grit and clean up any inside corners with a cabinet scraper. Then it was time for finish. My finish of choice, a satin wipe-on polyurethane. I really love how it brings out the grain. Being this was going to be a TV lift cabinet, I had to cut a notch out of the bottom shelf for the mechanism. That I just did with the jigsaw. Then I mounted my top mounting bracket for the mechanism and marked for a bottom stretcher that was going to support the mechanism as well. Then it was just a little bit of hand tool work to make the sockets to accept that bottom piece. All said and done, it was a nice snug fit. Here you can see that bottom stretcher. Then it was time to make the four drawers. If you're interested in how to make drawers from start to finish, I did a separate video on that and I'll put the link in the description below. For the drawer hardware, I picked overextension ball bearing drawer slides. They're nice and smooth and the overextension allows you to see all the way to the back of the drawer. Again, being this is a little bit of a unique cabinet and there's going to be a TV lift mechanism in it, I had to put some cleats and a couple braces and brackets so that the drawer hardware had somewhere to attach to without actually going to the full back of the cabinet. That's where the TV was going to be. Here you can see all those cleats in place. Then it was just a matter of putting all the drawers in. Then I could head back to the table saw, cut out some cherry for the drawer fronts. And then of course I could add my moniker. The drawer front's got the same wipe-on satin polyurethane.
Once the finish was dry on the drawer fronts, I could then counter bore, drill some through holes, and install the handles. Beforehand, when I was picking out the wood for the drawer fronts, I had the certain grain orientation all picked out, but I just wanted to make sure and go back through and see what was best to the eye. Then with some double-sided tape, I could clamp the drawer fronts in place, making sure that they were nice and straight, even, and nicely spaced. Clamp it and secure it with a couple screws. Here's with all the drawer fronts in place. In the top drawer, I added a charging station for any type of mobile devices or game controllers, considering it's a TV cabinet. And it also had a built-in secret compartment. Back on the table saw with some cherry, I then could focus in on my hung and groove panel doors. The rails would receive a tongue on each end, and all the pieces would get a groove centered down the middle, making sure it's just the right size to fit the dual-sided cherry veneer plywood I was going to use. After that, I could get an exact size for the cherry veneer plywood, and I cut that to size, cutting two pieces. Here you can see the dry assembly. Then it was just a matter of adding some glue, putting the panels in, throw on some clamps, and the doors were just about done. The joinery turned out nice and tight, which I was super happy about. If you guys are interested in seeing the project a bit more close up, including all the joints and hardware, check the link in the description. I'll have a video in the build article. Again, same finish here, satin, wipe on polyurethane. I can then bore some holes in each of the doors to use some cup style European hinges. At this point, the top kind of was talking to me and it said, I need breadboard ends. So, quick change in plans, and I put some breadboard ends on the top. I only glued about the center third section, that way the top can expand and contract just fine. Once I had all the finish applied to the top, I mortised out for a piano hinge that was to be inset on the back top. That was going to allow when the TV pops up for this to hinge out of the way. I put a panel in the center of the cabinet, and that's where I was going to mount all the electronics to the TV lift itself. I also added a surge protector power strip, and to mount that, I showed in another video a nice little trick on how to do that. Again, link in the description. For the TV to actually get a signal, there needs to be an infrared repeater, so I just bored a hole for that and installed that in the center top rail of the cabinet. All those connections could get made, then I could install what I would call a mid panel inside the cabinet as well. I made some clips out of some scrap wood to secure the top into some biscuit slots in the subframe. Then it was just a matter of placing the front top and securing it with screws using those clips. The back top I secured with some piano hinge. Then it was just a matter of hooking up all the wiring, making sure all the wires were nice and neat, that way the drawers or any type of moving parts weren't going to interfere with the wiring. Here's one of the emitters that you can place in front of the infrared signal on the TV or a cable box or whatever you have. That way your remote will work through the cabinet. Not that anyone was going to see this, but I took a piece of foam and made somewhat of a gasket or a grommet. That way the wires could go through and any light from the TV wasn't necessarily going to shine towards the front of the cabinet. Off camera on the router table, I just made some cove molding and cut everything to size. I think it just kind of added to the top. I made sure to glue this only onto the face frame, not the top itself. That way the top could expand and contract with seasonal changes. With that bottom and top bracket now in place, the TV lift mechanism itself could be installed. Just a couple screws hold that in place, and then there's a crossbar that you actually secure the TV itself to. Drop the TV in place and bolt it down. 
Well, that didn't turn out too bad at all. I'm actually very pleased with the results. Uh, that mid panel, I ended up actually throwing a couple holes in there to act as a vent so that any type of electronic heat buildup was, you know, dissipated, you know, and there was that. Man, this guy likes to talk there. a lot. But I didn't think I was actually. Thanks for watching the video, guys, and a special thank you to TVLiftCabinet.com for sponsoring this video as well as supplying the lift mechanism for this project. If this is something you guys want to build, make sure and check out the build article. I'll have a link in the description. That'll have all the links and everything you'll need to get started on a project like this. Also, in that build article, I'm going to have a showcase video. This is a pretty big project, so I wanted to have a separate video kind of highlighting some of the joinery, the hardware, and kind of have a zoomed in look at the project. Give a, a better look at you know, the overall build. So if you guys are interested in that, like I said, I'll have a link in the description below. One of my favorite parts to this lift is that IR repeater, or that infrared repeater. You can use your regular TV remote, and then the mechanism senses when your TV turns on. And then it raises it, or in this case, it lowers it when you turn the TV off. I don't know. I just thought that was the coolest part to the whole system. Well, until I see you guys next time, you guys, take care.